The variety in, of individuals and where everybody's from and the, and, and the way they all approach what they do and how they race uh, is so different, so much different. Because all most of the guys in NASCAR born in the United States, right? The culture's different from coast to coast and state to state, but not vastly. In IndyCar, obviously you have the accents and... But you, everybody, like, I don't, you can help me with this, James, but when you grow up in a different part of the world, you view and approach motorsport in that, in the way that you're sort of trained from that, that geographic location, you know? And for example, like Australians, they're really aggressive, right? Uh, when I watched V8 supercars all my life, man, they don't mind getting in there and beating on each other. And that's just (laughs) part of it, right? Um, and they complain a lot on the radio. That's Will Power <laughs> did during that race. <laughs> I was just really, I was not, I was not up to what a huge sort of uh, variety of personalities and 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 approaches and styles there are in any car. That blew me away. I mean, I know everybody's from somewhere different, and there's a lot of international drivers in the series, but does that really has to? be a big challenge i think uh melding all those personalities and and people together on the racetrack because of the disagreements and things that you have about how you race right the etiquette in racing that's that's just it i mean so you've got the you've got the kind of cultural difference from a racing standpoint in terms of the guys that grew up racing primarily in north america versus the guys that grew up racing in europe or asia or australia and, and all of those areas kind of have their own quirks. And then on top of that, you throw in whatever, you know, like nationalistic differences there are from wherever they're from. Cause you may have grown up racing in Europe, but you might be Australian like Will Power, which is the most insane combination. Cause you have the super aggressive Australian blood and you've got the like crazy, don't really care about anybody else, European attitude coming together. <laughs> like, that's, that's, a, that's a tough thing to manage, you know, but I mean, obviously successful. I mean, look yeah. at what he's done, but uh, but you're right. And and, and it's funny, you, you brought it up. And this is the point I wanted to make was it's how people deal with conflicts and how people deal with things going wrong is actually probably the most different. You know, there's some guys that are able to just kind of shake it off and be like, hey, man, that's racing. No big deal. Some guys take everything that happens on track insanely personally. Exactly. And so, yeah, it's you have to kind of learn like so the European mentality, a lot of the guys that come over from Europe, right? The European mentality is very you can't have friends at the racetrack, you've got to be able to hate everybody and, and push them within an inch of, of anything. And the North American <laughs> attitude was usually a little bit more relaxed than that. And I've always, I've always kind of thought of it the other way. I've always thought that like, you know, I'm on, I'm on the racetrack with these guys and essentially my life is in their hands in certain scenarios. Right. I want to know who the hell I'm racing. Yeah. Right. I, I want to know their personality. I want to know what makes them tick. I want to know how I think they're going to react in a certain situation. And I've always found that your off track personality translates a lot in a lot of cases to what you're like on track. And so I've had to take the time. I've, you know, I've wanted to, and I've made the effort to take the time to try to get to know all these guys off track. So that way I feel better prepared to race them on track. Yeah. That was one of the things that blew me away is, is just something simple as a, what a block is to one guy might not be, everybody has their opinion on like what's what's a defensive move what's an aggressive move yeah and um man and you know to hit, and and you're sitting on the computer racing these guys and you got all these different styles and accents of you know coming across you know the headset and you're like man this is like it's like everybody all over the country came together to race at once i'm just so used to in nascar it just you know everybody kind of grows up under the same set of rules and regulations and everybody has a pretty good understanding of what's good and bad on the racetrack and what the etiquette is and man and in, in, in indycar it's it's so different everybody's so different i, I like I, I that. Love that i well, but i love that about nascar man because everybody comes up and there's kind of there's like this unwritten set of rules yeah. right there's like the the gentleman's rules yes. which are often very ungentlemanly but you know, like it's just sort of a known unspoken thing. And I, I love that. I mean, some of the times like I'll see you guys wail on each other and I'll think the guy that got hit is just going to come out fuming, throwing helmets. And he's like, no, nah, man, I deserve that one. Or like, that's what I would have done in the same situation. I'm like, dude, these guys are awesome. Like, yeah. I love the, the respect out there sometimes is just next level. So so, so what is the gentleman rule in IndyCar then? What, what, what could we expect the, the drivers to have an unspoken 
agreement? So, so the, the big one that, that comes up, uh, on oval racing, right. Is, is to just not take a guy's airway if you're making a pass. Right. So if let's say you're passing a guy on the outside of one, two, at Texas, right. And you clear a mid corner, you hold your second lane, you hold that line until you get out. If you just drop down in the middle of the corner, when you're only six inches in front of the guy and take his wind off, I mean, that's, that's a really, really crappy thing to do. Wow. That's that, that can end that can end the guy's day in a big way. So there's there's definitely an etiquette on the ovals just because of the risks and the way the cars behave on there. And and sometimes like you get young guys come in and they've maybe done some indie light stuff, so they get it. Sometimes they think they just got something to prove, so they're super aggressive and they've got to be pulled in, you know, behind the trailer and and <laughs> given a few words. You get guys that have come over from Europe, never been on a Nova before. They've got no idea how to behave and how to react. And honestly, man, it goes back to that iRacing thing. There were guys that are new to the series that we've never raced before and we know haven't been on ovals. And you kind of get a sense of like, okay, if, if this is how he's going to be in the real car, yeah. we might have to have a conversation before we even get to Texas. You know? <laughs> wow. That's so funny. Well, uh, i got to ask, though. So the Australian drivers are uh, scrappy and aggressive. The Europeans are mm -hmm. just unfriendly. What are Canadian mm -hmm. drivers? I mean, we're just, we're Canadians, man. We're just easy. We're just, we just want to get the race over and have a beer and, you know, just, <laughs> you, know, you know. All Canadian drivers. Easiest. Pretty much. Well, I mean, there's the French Canadians, which are a little more fiery, right? Like Tagliani, <laughs> you guys know Tag. He oh, yeah. gets, he gets fired up from time to time, but he's good, man. He's good behind the wheel. 